Sonia is from the bush, not the city. Prefers riding her horse than the subways and buses of the metro. But in any one week, when she's not riding, she'll likely be visiting Germany, the US or Israel, or all three. Nice breakfast. Ben rarely travels to the big smoke, but he's often working with professors in Boston, a mate in Romania, or even once the US Senate. As Ben and Sonia would agree, it's all Andrew's fault. At least Andrew and his teacher colleagues. Now, while Andrew is a biology teacher, few of them get summoned to advise the US Vice President on global telecommunications projects. Andrew was. But then, influencing world affairs is just part of the high school curriculum here at Broadford, in country Victoria. Town population, 2,000. It's all happened with the application of a little computer technology. But the Broadford achievements, as we'll see, have come not so much because of computers, but rather with the way this school has used them. If a teacher believes that the computer is more important than them or will dictate what goes on in their class, then, uh, then I think they're destined to fail. The emphasis isn't on the computer, it's on iron and the people that I can talk to through using the computer. At Broadford, they've opened their classrooms and put to work the vast resources of the World Wide Internet. You may have heard of the internet. You may not know what it means or what it does. It doesn't matter. It's sufficient for you to know that with modern computers and this new communication method called the internet, Sonia here in southern Australia can connect with classrooms, can send messages, get information from classrooms on the other side of the world, in Dublin, Dallas, wherever. What this story shows is what this modern communication can mean to a classroom of school children. New York was the first place I wrote to and I sort of, I sent it away and it got there in four seconds which blew me away at first and then... Sonia takes part in what's called the International Holocaust and Genocide Project, linking students, teachers and Holocaust survivors in Australia, Israel, Argentina, South Africa and the US. And they've used their shared information to make a difference. This is a magazine called An End to Intolerance and it's actually published at a school in Cold Spring Harbour in New York. We have actually made some contributions. And you? It's a... Yes, I have. But could they have done all this without the new technology? It's impossible. It just couldn't happen. Now, not every geography teacher has such trouble telling the right time. But then not all geography teachers coordinate an international education computer network. Broadford hit the international stage when teachers like Bill developed what's now known worldwide as iEARN, the International Education and Resource Network, creating a global classroom linking over 400 schools in some 21 countries. Our computers and the connections we're able to make globally have fundamentally changed the way we see what we are able to do. Uh, in a classroom, things that I was not able to do three or four years ago now become common practice. Being able to communicate, say, with students in Beijing about water quality, about uh, a disaster in Kobe in Japan, we're able to do that instantaneously. Okay. So what does trialling down at the creek have to do with computers and international communication? The idea of bringing the, the kids down here to the creek is part of the I Earn philosophy, which is participation, which is what the kids are doing here. They're participating in collecting results in water testing. Water flees over 100. And communication, which is use, the use of the computers and the internet and, and spreading the results around the world. This similarly applies to Ben's work on the world's ozone problem in what's called the Global Ozone UV Project. Oh, that's a high reading. What is it? Uh, 576.4. It's very high. We're taking UV um, radiation measurements. Um, we send these into a central database in Boston, Massachusetts and share them with users all across the globe. I'm just entering the data in now to send over to um, Poland and the Crimea and the US and Italy. And when do they get this? Um, when, when I upload it, it'll take about 10 seconds to get over the 
And it's this very global classroom in the village of Broadford that caught the eye of the US Vice President. Andrew Hocking, a full-time biology high school teacher in a country town in Broadford, was requested by the highest levels of the United States government to attend a 30-person roundtable discussion designing and planning a project that is going to, in some ways, set the parameters for global telecommunications projects for the 21st century. So Broadford's experience is being utilised worldwide. With those pictures that we've got from the internet of the ozone layer, we have used them in a magazine called Icarus that we produce. We send that to whoever contributes to it. So we send it all over the world. Ben has been able to work with um, scientists and professors from around the world on projects that they have a common interest in. These achievements are not for every school. Sure, the capacity, the opportunity to do all this, that's here right now. But it'd be unfair to Australian teachers, to Australian parents, for me not to point out that this ordinary country school has had several extraordinary teachers devoting an extraordinary amount of their own time, their energies, their technical abilities, even some of their own money to get it up and running. And some companies and governments have assisted. So whether it's wise for all Australian schools to devote their limited educational resources trying to achieve this, well, that's another story. But this is sure a fine example of what can be done. And for students like Sonia, whose education has now embraced the internet, their classroom has changed forever. Realising that your own world isn't Australia, your world doesn't finish in Victoria or in Broadford, we can talk to anyone around the world.